In this video I will show you how much the C63s came down in price, whether the depreciation curve already bottomed out, and if so, which parts are the best deals in today's market. What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. Now last week we had a look to the AMG GTR, but this week we will focus on a slightly more affordable car, the C63 AMG. And this video is by the way requested by Harry, and that of course also means that you can request the video simply by commenting the name of the car for which you would like to see an analysis down below in the comment section. Also make sure then that you smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. Now let's figure out what's going on in the C63 market, and to do this we're going to take a few steps. We will start off by having a look to the depreciation per year, and with those numbers we will make then a market forecast. After that I will show you then which cars offer the best value for money in today's market by using the relative value plot. So if you are right now in the market for a C63 AMG, I would definitely stick around for that part. Now the full C63 market is appearing right over here, where you can see that we have model year on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. Each C63 for sale is represented by a bubble, and you can see that the bubbles have different colors. In orange we namely have the new cars, in blue we have the used cars, and in green we have the certified cars. Then you can also see that there are some small axes in the graph, and these represent the average price point for a given model year. Now if we have a look to the market we can see that there are 906 C63s AMGs for sale that prices start at $32,500. They go then up to $108,990 but the average price is $78,673. And what I think is interesting in this graph is that you can see that there are still quite some unsold stock from 2019 and 2018. So you can probably get those cars with quite some discount. Now the plot you just saw is of course the basis for our analysis. And that of course also means that the depreciation curve is based on that plot. So let's have a look. Now the depreciation curve is appearing right over here. Where you can see that we've still the full market but with a depreciation line. Oh and by the way to get the smooth depreciation line I removed all the unsold stock I talked earlier about. You can also see that all the cars have now the same colors and that is because the depreciation curve goes for the full market. Now if you have a look to the graph, then we can see that the average depreciation per year is $10,706. And as you would expect, there's a huge difference depending on the age of the car. In the first year you will namely lose an average $14,225, or 16% of the car's value. After 5 years however, this number decreased to $1,377 or 3% of the average price for a 2016 car. And that last number is not a bad number at all. It's namely better than the one for a Porsche GT3. However, over the course of the full five years, you will lose $44,752, and this equals 50% of the car's value. This number, however, doesn't come as a surprise. After all, the C63 is an expensive car without a production limit. And if you're shopping in that market segment, then you know that you're in for some steep depreciation. But how about the C63 market itself then? Are there some differences within the market? Is the S version, for example, depreciating less than the normal version? The answer to that you can see in the plot over here, where we have now the same depreciation curve but split between the S and the normal C63. You can see now that the S depreciates on an average of $11,051 and that the normal version depreciates at an average rate of $9,788 per year. So as you could probably expect, the S depreciates with a higher absolute number than the normal version. Relatively however, the depreciation numbers are almost identical, as they equal to 13 and 14% of the average new prices. But due to the higher absolute depreciation number of the S, we can see that the premium that you pay for an S fades away when the car ages. When you're going to buy a new car, you namely need to bring an additional $7,237 to take the ass home. After five years though, this premium decreased to $4,775. Now all of those numbers of course refer to the current market situation. But you of course want to know if you can expect similar depreciation rates going forward. Well, normally I would first show you the depreciation per thousand miles driven before we have a look to those forecasted values. But today we will immediately go to those forecasted values. Those are now appearing right over here where you can see it in blue we still have the depreciation curve for the full market, which you already saw a while back. But then in orange we have now the forecasted values. Before we continue however, please remember to smash that like button if this video is helpful for you in any way. So what does this graph tell us? Well, if you're for example in the market for a 2019 car, then you can just follow the depreciation curve to get a good estimate 
of the expected depreciation. Depending on the miles you added to the car, compared to the average mileage increase between the cars from model year 2019 and 2018, the value will be either higher or lower. For the cars from model year 2015, we however don't have this depreciation curve yet. And that's where the orange forecasted dots come in. These dots namely show the forecasted prices for a 2015 car one year from now. You can see however that there are quite many forecasted values and that's because each of them represents a 2015 car with a different mileage. And it goes without saying that the lowest mileage cars will be priced the highest and the highest mileage cars the lowest. If we however take them all together and look then to the average price point which is indicated by the black X then we can see that compared to 2015 the cars are valued $1,377 lower. So in other words, the forecast model tells us that if you own a 2015 car, you can expect to lose on average $1,377 in the upcoming year. And you can see that this price drop is in line with the price decrease between 2016 and 2015 and the overall development of the curve. Now, if we combine then all of the numbers which we've just seen, I would say that the 2015 or 2016 C63 S offers excellent value for money. You're namely buying at the bottom of the depreciation curve and you only need to pay a small premium to go for the S version. Besides that, there's still some low mileage examples available out there. But more about what specific car is a good buy a bit later in the video, because we will now have a look as to how all of these depreciation numbers compare to some of the other cars I've analyzed. And to do that, we will of course have a look to the depreciation leaderboard. And not just any leaderboard, but the leaderboard based on the relative average depreciation rate. That rate is now displayed on the vertical axis while we have the different cars on the horizontal axis. If we find then the C63 over here, then we can see that it has actually quite a bad ranking. It is namely positioned all the way at the bottom of the leaderboard with a score of 12%. Compared to the Julia, however, which is of course one of the main competitors of the C63, it is not too bad. That car namely has a relative rate of 20%. Admittingly though, it is then also still slightly younger as it came a bit later on the market. Oh, and by the way, for all of the cars which were listed in the depreciation leaderboard, I have full depreciation analysis on my channel. So be sure to check them out if you for example want to see the full analysis for the Julia or any of the other cars. Now then, those were quite some statistics which I just showed you. Let's have a look now to a more practical aspect and find which car offers the best deal in today's market. And to find exactly that deal, we of course are going to use another graph. We namely need to consider the mileage, the model year and the price. You namely want to find a car with the lowest mileage the newest model year for the lowest price. And all of that we can consider in the relative value plot appearing right over here. You can see that we have the mileage now on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. The cars are still displayed by the bubbles, but there are two things going on with these bubbles. First, you can see that they have different sizes. It is namely so that the larger the size of the bubble, the newer the model year of the car. Second then, you can see that they have different colors and that is because the S version is displayed in blue and the standard version in orange. And in this graph, you want to look then for a bubble which has the lowest mileage, the newest model year and the lowest price. And a car which immediately pops out is this 2018 C63 S. This car namely has a price of $39,600 and a mileage of only 11,363 miles. Now you can see that this is priced far below the rest of the market. And when I was going to check out this car, it was already no longer available. Nevertheless, the price was then also so much below the market average that I'm doubting whether or not it was a clean title car. Let's have a look to some other examples. The first example of a good value for money car is this 2016 car with 21,738 miles and a price of $37,991. The second example is this 2017 S with 18,000 miles and a price of $45,888. Both of these cars namely have a mileage and a price which is below the market average. And hence, you win on both aspects and that is of course a good deal. Now the 2016 car is already sold, but the 2017 car is still available at Auto Junction. And this is by the way not a sponsored ad and also not a recommendation to buy the car. You of course need to do your own research very well and figure out if the car is up to your standard. Now if we go back to the graph and you were to pause the video right now and study this graph for a moment, then you would of course still find many more cars which offer excellent value for money. We are however not going to go through each and every one of them, so let's wrap up this video. To sum it up, the C63 market is behaving like any other luxury car market. The depreciation is namely steep, very steep. 
Especially in the first year of ownership. Furthermore, we saw that the premium which you pay for the higher spec cars fades away once the cars get older. And this is also typically something which belongs to this market segment. The good news however is that the market is bottoming quite strongly especially for the 2015 and 2016 cars. It is then also for these cars that the forecast model is predicting a very low depreciation rate in the upcoming year. Now as always a huge thank you for watching and remember to tune in next week for a new depreciation analysis.